Hello everyone, this is Suzanne and God Crochet and Chatter. Welcome back. Well, we've been studying the Bible through a year. Today is Sunday. <laughs> it's catch-up day. So go back and read the chapters you didn't have quite time to get caught up on or kind of look back and reflect what you have learned in those first chapters in Genesis. Now on Monday, we will be reading Genesis chapters 47 through 50. And that will be the end of Genesis. We will have gotten through the first book. Wow. Well, today, we did it. All right, say it again with me. We did it. Yay! Oh, the second week is done. Wow, and we're almost through the book of Genesis. Wow. Oh, that's so amazing. I get to hang this on my wall today. I'll take a video of my little wall over here sometime so you can see what I'm doing. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit today about how God work through the people in Genesis. Now on Monday, I will be doing a final recap on the book of Genesis and then we'll be ready for the exciting journey through Exodus. Well, I'm excited. Okay, let's see, where should we start here? Okay, I think we'll start with the devotion. This devotion is called The Forest and the Trees. Then Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will make of you a multitude of people and give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. possession. Now that's 48 verses 3 through 4. The phrase, he couldn't see the forest for the trees, suggests that getting too close to a problem blinds one to the bigger picture. It means to step back and refocus your perspective. What were the trees in Jacob's life that were so distracting that they could have taken his focus off God's plan for his life? The sins of his son, Judah. The supposed death of his beloved son, Joseph. A famine in Canaan that threatened to destroy the 70 plus members of his household. The anxiety of sending 10 of his sons to Egypt in search of food. The possibility of losing his youngest son, Benjamin, as collateral for food. Moving his household to a new land and culture. And those are just the ones we know about. But Jacob kept his eye on the prize. God's promise to create a nation through Abraham, Isaac, and now him. Don't let the trees you encounter today take your eyes off of God's forest, his everlasting plan for your life. Yeah, wow. Don't let the trees you encounter today take your eyes off of God's forest, his everlasting plan for your life. So whatever we're experiencing, whatever we're going through up to this point in our lives, it's for a reason and there's a purpose, there's a plan. So go with it. You may not understand, but you trust in God to see you through to the end. God can raise up a righteous person out of the worst situations. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Abraham, he believed in the Lord. Isaac, blessings to continue. Jacob, blessings to continue. Jacob's 12 sons. Jacob, Israel, as he was later named, loved Joseph. And through Joseph, all nations of the world would be blessed. Wow, talk about a lineage. Jesus is the only perfectly righteous never sinned. He's perfectly righteous, never sinned. The story of Joseph shows us a partial, incomplete picture of God's promise to Abraham. And that would come down all the way to Jesus 
No more animal sacrifices, atoning for sin. The one sacrifice, once and for all, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed that devotional. Now, as I said, on Monday, I will be reviewing chapters 42 through 50. And it's going to be a nice summation to where we're at before we start into Exodus. I thoroughly enjoy studying God's Word with you. I My eyes are opened up more and more each day. I can't wait to get back to God's Word to study it and see what's going to happen now to those children of Israel. I hope you are enjoying this journey. Many of you have commented below that you're really enjoying your studies and you will be blessed for it. We asked several to pray for several of our family members to pray for them. Uh, I think it's Dorothy and her husband. I'm sorry if I got that mixed up who it was, but he has arthritis really bad and they, they deal with inflammation every day. One lady was going to be having eye surgery. Um, I believe that might be on Monday. And there were a couple others that asked for prayer requests. So let's do that for a moment right now. Heavenly Father, you know our needs even before we asked. But you told us to pray without ceasing, to bring to remembrance these things, to bring them before your altar. And Lord, we just bring all these people to your altar. Lord, we ask for healing we ask for comfort. We ask that they have the strength and courage to get through each day, no matter what that brings. Lord, strengthen them through their prayer life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everyone. Congratulations on getting through week two. Oh, I'm so excited. Now, on March 1st, remember, we're going to have a drawing for the crocheted horse's head. And that will be exciting. So if you didn't get in on that, just look through my videos, not too far back, and you'll see where it says giveaway. You can still get in on that giveaway if you haven't done so yet. You must leave a comment below. Make sure you have that notification bell pressed. You must be a subscriber to my channel. And you want to be notified if you're a winner, because that's the only way that you'll get notified that, hey, a winner's been picked. Come on back and see if it was you. <laughs> All right, well... I have something to share. I'm so excited because in a little while, the lady we met on the trail, her name is Emily, not Amelia. I got that wrong. It's Emily and her daughter Amanda will be dropping by to pick up their scarves. Oh. I will try to take a video if she allows me to do that to share. Um, I can't wait to see the joy on her face and... I think I'm more happy than she is. I'm not the one getting the gift, but I can't wait for the open it. And I already know what it is, right? <laughs> Isn't that the way it is? We're so excited for the other person to open up their gift that we've given them. Why do you think that is? I think because we know the love that went into giving this gift. It brings our heart great joy to be giving to someone. I think basically Christians are givers. We want to help. We want to encourage. We want to give. Ah, uh, there's nothing like it. All right, I finished my lovey. Uh, he turned out so cute. Uh, I, I, I did, I'm working on getting my whips done. Well, here's this little guy. I'll scoot back here so you can see. Isn't he cute? Now, I brought in this turquoise, this shell edging on it, to make this here pop a little, and I think... I was successful in that. Oh, he is so soft. Now, I know that Joanne's sells Dumbo. And you can get them you know, when they have the 50% off coupon. They're only like $3.50 then. Uh, yeah, it's a really good buy. And as you can see, his little body's under here. And uh, let me show you up close here. It used I used one whole skein of the Mirror Woods. And then I just put a simple shell border on it. And that was just, I did, I just put my yarn in like here. I did five double crochets. And then in that middle group, okay, get closer. I did five double crochets. 
And then in that grouping there, in the middle one, a single crochet. Then in the space, five doubles. In the second double crochet, a single crochet. Five doubles all the way around. And then when you got over here, you did a single right there. And then in this space, you did seven double crochets. Then a single, and then carry it on to all four corners. Very easy to do. Oh my goodness. Th these go relatively quick. So I got this little guy done. And I am working on the second Elena wrap. I am determined to get that done. I should have it done by tomorrow evening. I'm going to work on it tonight. I've got a little, little over half of my second skein done. It takes two skeins to make the Elena wrap. So I'm getting excited about that. Then I can get those in the mail. And then I'll kind of be caught up except for a couple of Afghan, Afghan projects that I really need to finish up at some point in time. So I'm thinking next I'm going to make me one of those granny square cocoons house mouse. Uh, she does a great job on those and they're so beautiful. She just did one in the Mandela ombre yarn in the, I think it was a coral color like. Oh, it turned out really pretty. And I think I might make mine into a scrap one. I'll have to see when I go through my yarn what exactly I'm going to pick out. So anyway, this is Susanna God Crochet and Chatter. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this study as much as I am having a great time in teaching it and going through the Bible with you. You know, it is my prayer that we all grow on this journey through God's Word. All right, this is Suzanne and God Crochet and Chatter. May the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet again. And Lord willing, I will see you tomorrow on God Crochet and Chatter. Bye, everyone.